Well, we're back with the breakfast and plus TV Africa and uh, Monday Thomas joins us this morning. We'll be looking at the World Cup. Monday, it's good to have you join us. Compliment of the season. Good morning to you, Mercy. Just two days to the finals of the World Cup. Can't wait to get on with it. Thank you for having me. Uh, but just before we get to, you know, the finals of the World Cup and uh, we're looking at Argentina and France in that particular game, let's quickly run through Morocco's performance. Uh, how would you rate that? Especially when it felt like it was, you know, Africa against the world. Fantastic performance. I mean, no superlatives, no words can actually describe the feeling of every African uh, for Morocco. They certainly put Africa in the world map. They were heroes, although they lost uh, in the semifinals against the defending champions. Of course, it was going to be a difficult tax. But if you want me to rate their performance as more than excellent, it is a World Cup where Africa came to the party. It's not just about Morocco. I think every African nation was ready. Every African nation who featured at the World Cup was ready. But you know, the World Cup is a big stage and you get to play against very big opponents. And uh, with this performance, there's certainly more to come uh, from the African contingents for the next World Cup, which is in four years time, the 2026 World Cup. I'm hearing that there is a potential 11 slots for African nation, African nations because of what Morocco uh, did at uh, this edition. Crashing out in the semifinals, I know they don't want to play in the third place, but in the third place, they can to make history as the first African nation to win a third place in the World Cup. It's certainly a cracking experience from the African point of view, but there is one very unforgiving statement that was uh, made by Sofian Buffel. He came out to say that uh, the win was for Arab world and Morocco and as well as Muslims. The coach Walik Rigra came out to say that, hey, you just have to forgive him. Maybe he's just uh, overexcited that certainly the win is for Africa. So some people may have taken so much offense uh, because of what he said. So I'm just here to say, hey, Morocco is Africa, whether they are black or white. All right. Um, uh, for me, I see Morocco is Africa. They are also Arabs as well. Nothing. I don't have a problem. But um, you know, it's both ways. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, they took part. They take part in the Arab World Cup and. Uh, Arab Cup, rather, that FIFA organizes. Algeria won the first one. They're an Arab country, um, which is who are on the African continent. Um, <laughs> you know, um, do they have blacks? But I, I mean, personally, I'm saying I don't have a problem with it. But 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 why why is it that that um, you know? I mean, you said Morocco played so well, they played fantastic. And we've seen a pattern amongst African countries. You know, Senegal, for instance, when they played against uh, uh, the, the first match of the, of the World Cup, uh, they lost that game against, I think, Netherlands. But they played well. You know, they played well. So what is it about African countries that we, we seem to play well, but there's no end product? Because if I'm going by what you said and by the analysis out there and by what I saw of the match, Morocco played better than France. So what's the problem with Africa? You know, Ghana, the same thing, too. Played so well, couldn't go past the quarterfinals. Senegal, played so well, couldn't go past the quarterfinals. Nigeria, in France, 98, and the U.S. in 94, had a very good team. Played so well, couldn't go anywhere. What's the problem with African football? All right, permit me, you might to get a little bit from football. Let's just talk about life in general, all right? There are always two things involved, right? Life or death. In football, there are two things involved. Position and penetration. And sometimes a team cannot have both. We saw Morocco in that game against the French side. They had position, but the French were the ones with the penetration. Morocco were terminating while France were... Uh, Morocco were dominating while France were terminating. So in football, more than two things can be true. And because you play... I always tell people, there's a difference between playing good football and playing the best football. Kofi, the best football is getting the result. Good football is just for entertainment. But I know there are some countries who play good football and also go ahead to play the best football. Shout out to Brazil. But in this tournament, they were not able to get the best football working for them. So for Africa, it's an eye-opener for the next edition. But just like you hinted, the fact Africans played so well. The Netherlands against Senegal. Senegal were, were doing greatly, but not greatly until the 90 minutes. I'm pretty sure you saw what Edward Mendy did in that game. Mixed calculations and two goals were scored in the space of four minutes. And that's how Senegal lost. They don't maintain concentration. Now, this is what happened to Morocco.
They did excellently well. If you take a look at this tournament, that was the first time they conceded by an opposition team, an opposition player. And they conceded so early. This is the pattern of Morgan and how they were playing this World Cup. They will keep you at bay up until the 30 minutes. 30 minutes when they know that, oh, they've mastered your tactics. But this is what happened to France. France knew that if they get the first goal, they're going to destabilize the tactics of the Moroccans. They got the first goal as early as the fourth minute. Now Morocco wanted to play. They wanted to win. They wanted to get an equalizer so that they can go back to their own negative kind of football. Of course, it doesn't matter if they play negative football. As long as they get the results, it doesn't matter to anybody. So now France scored first, and that was the end of Morocco. Morocco came out to see how they can equalize. And guess what? Kylian Mbappe, a player we call a demon, was running the flanks as if there is no tomorrow. And then it was able to force a second goal by Kodo Mwane, scoring just 44 seconds. Morocco were the only team that would have won this uh, uh uh, Nations Cup, I beg your pardon, this World Cup from Africa, but just that four minutes of play against the defending champions. We can just say that the Didier Deschamps uh, read, read the tactics. I mean, it was very obvious. Any football analyst will know the Moroccans and how they are playing and how they can destabilize it. Just score them the first goal and then you get, the, you get them scattered. So, but let's, uh, you know, quickly get to the game. We'll definitely have a third place being played, Croatia, and, of course, Morocco will be playing third place. And, of course, getting to the finals, Argentina and France, uh, what are your expectations? But, really, we'll, we'll, we'll stay with France and Argentina. And we see the composition, mostly. Messi is actually there, you know, for Argentina. I've, I've always been very sad as a young Mercy, child growing Mercy. up. M Messi that, that's always hurting Nigeria <laughs> and making me feel mm. sad every other time. But, of course, he's right there, fantastic player. You also have Mbappe uh, Dembele, uh, amongst others. What exactly should we expect and, and what do you think will turn out? Mercy, expect fireworks, expect a cracker. It's, it's going to be a game that will put us on the edge of our seats for 90 minutes. They say it's the king versus the heir. I mean, Kylian Mbappe versus Lionel Messi. But at the end of the day, I think one is just going to prevail over the other. And that's how cruel football can be. I mean, it's sad that we cannot have two winners in football. And this is very always very, very heartbreaking when we can't have two winners because these two players... They are great actors uh, when it comes to football. But I think it's, it's a game where Argentina can win, but it's not going to be very easy. They are playing against France, the world champions, and they'll be looking to defend it, being the first country to win it back-to-back -back in 60 years. So they have this motivation to break his, to make history and also break the jinx in uh, 60 years. So Argentina is going to take them a flash of brilliance from Messi if they can get through, but when it comes to the French side, they have the likes of Usman Dembele, they've got Kylian Mbappe, they've got a very underrated striker, but he's, he's very potent. I'm talking about Olivier Giroud. I'm also hearing that, Kylian, uh, that Karim Benzema could come in for that particular game. So it's, it's going to be a difficult game for Argentina, but I'm tipping them to win because I'm a Messi fan, but I've got to face reality that on the paper, France are a better team. All right, all right. Maybe the the idea, the thought that Messi could end his uh, World Cup career on a high with winning this World Cup could uh, s inspire the hearts and the spirits of Argentines to to kill themselves on, I mean, on the field. <laughs> at the end of the day, at the end of the day, for the banter, Cristiano Ronaldo, Messi, oh. Messi is still the best player for me. I mean, I'm not to say this. You have, to, you have to go there. You have to go there and make. <laughs> Some people angry Let's this morning. And makes people angry this Cristiano morning. Cristiano Ronaldo has not played in any World Cup finals. I yeah. mean, Messi has played in two World Cup finals. So right. let's just see what happens. But right. Cristiano Ronaldo, without a doubt, right. one of the greatest. Thank you one very much. Greatest. Thank you. I mean, I, I'm looking out for Antoine Griezmann because I feel Griezmann has been the key and the best player for France in this World Cup. Um, some people don't agree with that. But uh, I'm looking for his, his play. Also looking for... Um, the other guy, the guy in Argentina who plays for Atletico Madrid, the one who is always, you know, hacking people down so he protects uh, Messi. Um, we have yeah, to go yeah, now. Yeah, I'm looking for Alfa Di Paul and Gentlemen, Griezmann, we have to go. Uh, uh, playing in, in the midfield. But thank you very much for your time, um, Monday, Thomas, and look forward to having you after the walk-up. We'll see if your prediction will come through. Coffee, I'll be back next week Friday to celebrate Argentina. 
Alba Celeste, thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. He's obviously a messy fan. <laughs> no, no, we have this mercy here. Oh, no, well. <laughs> not this mercy. That's the size of we it. We to need to go now, and our fingers crossed we're uh, you know, inching closer to 2023. Of course, we're anticipating the end of the World Cup. Let's see how all of that pans out. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Bopo. We join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Have a fantastic morning. My name is Kofi Bartel. So see you next week. Have a nice weekend.